Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to worship here from St. John's Presbyterian Church in Grimsby. I want to welcome you if you are watching at home today. We're so thankful that you've joined us wherever you are. We are glad that you're here. And I'm so thankful that I've got some friends with me here uh, in person in the sanctuary. Good morning, everyone. It's such a wonderful day to come and worship God in person or at home, uh, wherever we are, uh, wherever God's people are gathered. Uh, God is, is present with us and Christ is glorified and the Holy Spirit is able to teach and uh, equip us. We are continuing our journey through Advent. This uh, week is the uh, second uh, Sunday in Advent and this is the Sunday where we think about and reflect on peace. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, being at peace in a time of conflict. We're going to hear about the story of Joseph uh, and uh, maybe some of the inner conflict that he was dealing with. Uh, and above all, at the end of the day, how uh, he chose a, a peaceful pathway and uh, how we can learn uh, from, from Joseph's example, but also from uh, the book of uh, Colossians and Paul's letter to that church about uh, ways of pursuing peace. And so as we uh, begin uh, our talk about peace, I want to say, peace be with you. Okay, we're going to try that again. <laughs> Take two. As we uh, begin our, our discussion about peace, I'm going to say, peace be with you. Wonderful. So let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds and enter into a time of prayer as we begin our time of worship together. Please pray with me. Almighty God, you blessed us with your son, Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, who is the one who has showed us a new way, the best way to live and to love other people. Lord, as we enter into this time of worship, each one of us knows uh, conflict in our own life. Each one of us um, knows uh, turmoil and unrest. Lord, sometimes these things can be very distracting to us. Uh, they can be very upsetting to us. Lord, in these next few moments, we pray that you would help us to eliminate these distractions and any other distractions that might be in our way uh, and might interrupt uh, your conversation with us. Bless us, Lord, as we prepare to worship. Lord, we all know that there are times in life when uh, Maybe things have got the better of us and uh, we've used words that were unnecessary or actions that were destructful. And we haven't uh, necessarily pursued a pathway to peace or a way to, uh, to reconciliation. Lord, we know that your way is a way of peace and forgiveness and that's the life that uh, you call us to live and that's the life that Jesus died on the cross for, that we would be forgiven. Or for the times when we have not pursued peace, when we have pursued conflict, when we have pursued uh, division and uh, wanted to inflict hurt on others, Lord, we confess our sin to you and pray that you would uh, you would correct us and show us the ways that we can continually live uh, in peace with you and with others that you bless us with. We pray all these prayers in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Friends, hear the good news that during the Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives you, because the peace that I give you cannot be taken away, cannot lose its value. Friends, know that we are forgiven of our sins because of Christ's sacrifice, and we can live in full confidence that we can live in peace with God and with one another, because we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God for his forgiveness of our sins. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, light our second Advent candle, the candle of peace. I'm going to invite uh, Jackie to come forward and to lead us uh, through uh, this time of worship. Peace is the light that sheds understanding. Peace is the promise of God. 
Peace is found when God's order and justice are brought to the world. We await the birth of the Prince of Peace. Now let us worship God through song. As we continue our journey through Advent, today we examine what it means to live in peace and be in peace in a time of conflict. And in a moment, we're going to look at the letter to the Colossian church from Paul. Today, reading from Colossians 3, verses 12 to 17. So let us hear God's word. It says this, Put on then as God's chosen ones who are holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, gentleness, humility and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all, put uh, on love, which find, binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called uh, in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in, do, in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Thanks be to God for this message from his holy word. We continue our series, The Character of Christmas. And these characters of Christmas last week, we talked about hope. 
and the hope that Mary and Elizabeth both felt in their hearts as they uh, were both awaiting the arrival of their children, of John the Baptist and, and, and Jesus. An often overlooked character at times in the Christmas story is a character of Joseph. Now we know that uh, Joseph uh, was a carpenter. We know that uh, Joseph uh, was engaged to be married to Mary. And uh, we know that, uh, that Joseph had some, maybe some inner conflicts about uh, what to do uh, with, uh, with this uh, oncoming child, this expectant child, and uh, knowing that, uh, that uh, he and Mary were, were unmarried and, and hadn't been together. And we know, also know that uh, Joseph was a direct descendant of King David, some 42 generations removed, but a direct descendant of King David. That's kind of what we know about Joseph. Not, not a lot, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the way it goes. Uh, sometimes you sort of lose your identity, especially when you when you have a child. I remember uh, my uh, my first time back to to St. John's uh, after Ella was born, and uh, and uh, traveling in with uh, with a friend from church, and he said, "Now you realize your name isn't Kyle anymore; you're just Ella's dad." And I thought, "Okay, I can I can live with that." That's a that's a, a badge I will, I will gladly wear. We think about uh, Joseph in, in his time of, of conflict. Because as we discussed uh, last time uh, in uh, that culture, the view of, of women was primarily that they were to, to bear children and this was to be done uh, within the confines of a marriage. And that was the social expectation. And if someone for one reason or another did not meet that expectation, uh, then they would be shunned and they would be, uh, be greatly, um, greatly embarrassed uh, and, and treated poorly by their community. That was the attitude at the time. So Joseph, uh, realizing that uh, his uh, to wife-to-be was, uh, was expecting um, and, and knew that he didn't have anything to do with it, uh, was quite concerned and was contemplating if he should just just leave because this this thing wasn't right um, and he didn't need the embarrassment uh, and uh, and quite frankly it could it could really be detrimental to the rest of his life to his his work as a carpenter in that society because if he was uh, linked with Mary and people knew that and, and had a past judgment on her unfairly and uh, quite wrongly uh, that um, that they were having a, a child out of marriage, then, then that would uh, cause him a lot of uh, a lot of trouble in his life, uh, socially, but also uh, in his business. He could lose business because people wouldn't want to deal with someone or work with someone uh, who was immoral. They would see that as uh, something to to shy away from. And so uh, Joseph sort of has it made up in his mind that you know what, maybe he's going to go and, and tell Mary and break things off. Now, thankfully. That's not what happened, because the angel came to Joseph in a dream and said, don't, don't leave, don't, don't quit, don't give up, because what uh, Mary is going through, this is, this is from God, and the son that she is, uh, is giving birth to will be the Messiah. Uh, he will be the Christ, He'll be, he will be the Savior, the one who saves people from their sins. Uh, but Mary needs you to, to be with her, to not leave her. And uh, certainly, you, you know, Joseph was aware of the stress that he was under and, uh, and certainly um, maybe aware that uh, Mary would be under a similar thing. And, and so he had, he had a decision to make. He could decide to up and leave and, and say, well, that's that and try and move on with his life. Or he could see it through and be faithful and pursue a, a pathway of peace in a, in a time uh, when there would be a lot of conflict surrounding uh, this union and the, uh, uh, the, the soon arrival of the child, Joseph realized that he had had a, a visit from God's angel and that he had been, uh, been given a message and, and he needed to be faithful to that. And so as we 
uh, we think about Joseph and, and sort of the, the trouble that he and Mary faced, um, they stuck together as a team. Certainly there would have been some, some hard feelings uh, to, to overcome before things were explained. And I think we've all been in that situation. Maybe we, we assume that the, the worst has happened if we, we catch wind of something and maybe we don't have the full story. We've made, it, uh, made up in our minds uh, an opinion about a certain person or, or a situation. But once we learn more, we realize that, uh, you know what, maybe we actually haven't been wronged. There just hasn't been clear communication or we've been misinformed. No one likes that feeling of being wronged, and uh, that's where Joseph starts his journey. Uh, but quite quickly, uh, God straightens him out and says, listen, buddy, it's, it's not you, it's me. Uh, and so uh, is able to, uh, Joseph is able to, to pursue uh, a life of, of peace and uh, is able to, uh, feels freed up to continue honoring his, his commitment to Mary. And as we um, really look at the, the verses from Paul's letter uh, in Colossians 3, we think about some of these, these characteristics uh, that, that Joseph uh, embodies. Uh, Paul writes to for, for all of us that we need to put on compassion and kindness. Uh, so certainly the, the compassion is uh, Joseph really quickly needs to get out of himself, get beyond himself to look, uh, look further uh, and to, to think about uh, what his fiance is going through. Uh, and when, when anyone's able to prefer the needs of someone else, uh, that's a very compassionate thing to do. He's also to, he also displays kindness as Paul writes. Um, and and uh, certainly he would be within his, his social rights to, to break things off. Uh, but he realizes, no, this is a this is a person I'm engaged to. This is a person that um, that I I want to be spending my life with. And let's let's work together. Let's be a team. And uh, and decides that uh, it, it's a you know he needs to to just do that and to get over himself uh, and to uh, to provide Mary with the love and care and support that she needs because she's in an extremely difficult. Uh, and precarious situation socially uh, and, and physically as well. And, uh, and having that support of someone else uh, is, is needed. Uh, and um, also the scripture says that, um, that we are to uh, pursue gentleness and humility. Um, certainly uh, it's, uh, it's important in, in that idea of preferring uh, others needs above our own that's that's a humble thing to do and, and anytime that we decide uh, to serve uh, in, in any capacity uh, that's a humble thing to do we want we're to prefer that to prefer to to serve and to and to do it quietly not to be the center of attention not to um, make it all about ourselves but to make it either about the other person that we're serving or the cause that we're uh, contributing to um, and patience uh, and bearing with one another. Uh, and so uh, Joseph, again, uh, is able to, to decide to find a way that he's going to bear with the situation, um, that, that the world will be, you know, judging him and uh, probably treating him not too kindly. Uh, and so uh, with God's help, is able to resolve his own inner conflict and uh, and certainly with with Mary's love and uh, and support uh, is able to uh, to be the the partner that she needs uh, as they go on that journey and uh, we can only imagine the the stress that they would have faced together the judgment um, certainly we know the story of not having any room at the inn um, and uh, uh, trying to find a place for for Jesus to be born. Uh, that's just a one little snapshot that we find in the scriptures of, of the idea of, of not being welcomed um, in in one's own uh, place, uh, hometown or place of uh, of ancestry. And so uh, that's uh, kind of what, what we see uh, with Joseph. And so as as followers of Jesus today, it's important for us to to uh, to take a look. Uh, at these traits that Paul outlines in Colossians 3. And the first 
uh, 11 verses, verses of uh, Colossians chapter 3, there's two lists of five items that we are not supposed to do as Christians. It's kind of the, the Colossians 3 is kind of the, the do's and don'ts of Christian living. And instead of focusing on the negative and saying, here's all the stuff you're not supposed to do and the, the attitudes we're not supposed to have, sometimes it's a lot easier just to focus on, well, how do we, how do, we do this? How do we uh, live uh, as uh, representatives of Christ? And, and, um, and by doing so, by, by putting on um, compassion and kindness, gentleness, humility, uh, and patience, uh, we're able to uh, to be a witness to people about how, uh, as Christians, uh, we see the world differently. We understand situations in a different way uh, because uh, because God's word and our relationship with Christ uh, frames our relationships and frames our interactions with other people. I don't know about you, but I sometimes have a, a really difficult time with the last one on that list, that patience piece. Uh, I think maybe we've all heard that uh, that joke uh, with that prayer, God, give me patience and give it to me now. Uh, and certainly, uh, if uh, you might remember back to your, your days, uh, like the days that I'm in now, with living with a four-year-old uh, about three weeks before Christmas, uh, it's we, we try each other's patience, really, because the anticipation is there. And it's hard to count, uh, you know, over 22 sleeps to Christmas. That's a long countdown. Um, but it's there. Uh, and, and I know also just with this time of year, uh, there can be a lot of, of stress. There's a lot of things to get ready. There's a lot of things to do, a lot of arrangements to make, people to see, uh, gifts to wrap or things to buy or things to get right or things to send back or you hope something arrives on time. There's enough uh, things to stress us out. And I don't know about you, but when I'm under stress, I'm not really the most patient person in the world. One of my favorite novelty Christmas songs is I Just Go Nuts at Christmas. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but uh, there's a uh, the character in the song, uh, Yogi Jorgerson, uh, it tells the story of all the, the just the, the stuff that kind of goes wrong uh, for him as he gets ready for Christmas and you know can't really find a, an, a, an appropriate gift for uh, for his wife and uh, decides to go out and, and have some fun with his friends uh, you know Christmas Eve but you know either he either stays up too late or the kids get up too early and he's not feeling too good in the morning and uh, you know it's a lot of noise and and stress and then the family comes over and there's in-laws and outlaws and they get fighting with each other. And, you know, at the end of the song, he says, I'm so glad Merry Christmas comes just once a year. And I think there's, there's uh, uh, some people find truth in that um, these days. Because Christmas certainly is a, is a time uh, for gathering and celebrating and sharing good things and having good food and all of these these things that uh, that we associate with with Christmas in forms of celebrating. But Christmas also is a time that we are reminded of conflict. Maybe we're reminded about the brokenness in our own uh, personal relationships. And sometimes uh, we're able to move through that that brokenness and set aside differences uh, during uh, during this season, because that's that's the Christian thing to do, or at least that's the Christmas thing to do. Or sometimes we find ways to, to be at peace with the way that things have, have gone and the decisions that, that we've made and that, that others have made. And, uh, and sometimes we're able to move through that. But sometimes it's a, it's a very rude reminder to us of the brokenness, of the pain, uh, of the conflict and uh, the lack of, a peace that uh, that we might know uh, in our life, and especially at a time when uh, we're supposed to be living in peace. That's that's kind of the the social expectation, and sort of when we read uh, this this scripture from Paul's letter, uh, that's also the spiritual expectation is to live in peace. Uh, and and so how do we how do we do that? Well, I think uh, first of all, it's it's being able to to name the things that are causing us a sense of conflict or a sense of pain or a sense of disruption. And it's okay to, to be honest about those things. 
and to find someone to to share that stuff with, whether that's a, a friend or, or a partner or someone in your family. And, and being able to have that difficult conversation um, with uh, with that sense of, hey, this is, this is a difficult time of year for me because, and it takes a lot of courage to name that, uh, but once we can, can name that, uh, then we're able to, to begin that journey of healing or, or at least uh, finding some peace uh, through this time. Uh, I remember a um, number of years ago at a church that I, uh, that I served, uh, the, the kids that I was working with, they made uh, a Fruits of the Spirit tree. And each, uh, each one of the Fruits of the Spirit uh, was symbolized by an actual fruit. Uh, and so I, I think the one that stands out most in my mind was that there was, uh, was one kid that chose uh, a pear uh, to put on the tree, and I said, "Well, what what does uh, what does a pear have to do with making peace?" And very cleverly, he says, "It takes a pair of people to make peace." And I thought that's incredibly insightful for for someone, for anybody, and especially for someone who's ten. It takes people willing to work together. That's the second step. So first of all is, is naming the thing that's causing us pain uh, and then uh, being able to, to find someone to work with on that, whether that's the party that you're in conflict with or, or someone that can support you uh, as you navigate these difficult feelings uh, or this difficult time or, or, or you're reminded of, of the pain of the way that maybe things that were hopes that were not fulfilled were and they, they cause us pain and a, and a lack of peace in our lives. And it's difficult to be at peace in a time of conflict. Sometimes we try and live in peace, things get really messy in a hurry. Uh, and uh, when we, we see that, it's important for us uh, to, to really stick, uh, to be true to form and true to who God is calling us to be uh, as peacemakers. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers and that's the kind of people that we uh, that we need to be right of a story that uh, took place the opening ceremonies of the 1936 olympics which were hosted in berlin and uh, uh, certainly this was during the time when when hitler was in power before the the second world war but uh, certainly uh, the the grotesque nazi policies uh, were were being uh, implemented and uh, certain groups of people were, uh, were treated quite horribly uh, e even before uh, World War II. And, uh, but this was a time when, uh, when Hitler and, and his, uh, his other leaders decided that, you know, for the two weeks that the world is here, let's, let's, put, on a, let's put on a brave face and uh, we'll, you know, we'll uh, use some propaganda and, and spin things that life is, is great and wonderful. And there was a, a moment in the opening ceremonies uh, when 10,000 pigeons were released uh, and they, they flew over the Olympic Stadium. And that was to, to symbolize uh, freedom uh, and, uh, and peace. Now, shortly after these pigeons were released, uh, and a lot of the pigeons were still in the air, there was uh, a, a military display where where guns and cannons and things were fired into the air. Well, if, if you know anything about birds or pigeons, uh, uh, what do they do when they get startled? You can just imagine the mess that, uh, that happened. Uh, and uh, one of the, uh, the, uh, the American athletes in their, their memoirs later uh, remembered the whole uh, American team having to line up for the showers uh, as soon as they got back to to wash their hair, so uh, this this thing that was supposed to be a sign of peace was was really a mess, and and certainly uh, maybe foreshadowing uh, what uh, what what was to come uh, in in the years that lay ahead. But certainly for us, as we do our best to make peace and to live in peace, we need to know that things can get messy feelings might unintentionally get hurt or difficult conversations may end up going a little bit sideways but through these times as we seek peace 
we need to, to continue uh, re reflecting on, uh, on what our goal is, and that's to, to live in peace and to live in perfect harmony. Verse 15 is especially poignant. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Uh, indeed, you were called uh, as in the one body. To let something rule in your heart is to, to make, mean that it takes precedence, that that's the goal. It's not just something that maybe we, we need to do and so we'll uh, you know, put a little extra effort into making it happen. But if it rules in our hearts, then that becomes the main priority. And so I, I would encourage us uh, this week uh, as we uh, realize that, uh, that for some of us, uh, Christmas certainly is a time of peace and we can be thankful for that. But also for some of us, uh, Christmas is a, is a time of conflict and uncertainty. Uh, and uh, w whatever our situation is, I think it's important for us to extend a little extra grace to one another. Because just as we may be living in peace, someone else may be living in conflict. Just as uh, we may feel that we can live in harmony, someone else is living with discord. And so, uh, again, remember that we need to name the things that are causing us pain. Find someone to share with, take it to, to God in prayer, and, and continue uh, prioritizing peace even when things get a bit messy and seeing Christ uh, in the other person or the other party that we are dealing with uh, because he sees us and he sees both sides. Amen. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of peace, and certainly it is a gift. Uh, it's a gift that sometimes uh, we keep close at hand, and it sometimes it feels very far away from us, or sometimes we, we feel like we've misplaced it, and we're not sure where it is. God, we pray for anyone who is uh, uh, stuck in the middle of conflict, stuck in the middle of uncertainty, living uh, with a sense of brokenness or incompleteness. God, we pray for those uh, who uh, grieve especially at this time of year as they are reminded of the loss of a loved one or they remember a difficult season that happened at this time of year and uh, they're, uh, they, they struggle. God, uh, we, we pray for those that are living with pain in their spirit, in their soul, uh, in their bodies, in their relationships. Lord, we pray for healing and we pray that, uh, that those that are calling on uh, peace would know it in a very deep way and that this peace comes from Christ. God, help us uh, to be uh, a listening ear uh, or uh, an accompanying friend to walk alongside someone uh, who is, is seeking peace and help us to, to lead them to that place. Lord, we uh, continue to pray for our world and we uh, remember the, and we see often this is the divisive nature um, of our society. And it seems like peace is, uh, is a forlorn hope at this point. God, we pray that, uh, that you would move mightily uh, within our culture, that you would move mightily within our communities, in our country, in our world, to show that uh, indeed uh, there, is, uh, there is a way to live in peace and that we can do that um, by, uh, by sharing uh, our, our pain, by, by finding a partner and being able to be patient and persevere through the messiness. Bless us, Lord, uh, and we offer all these prayers in the powerful, loving name of Jesus Christ, as well as the prayers that we've shared in the silence of our hearts. And together, uh, we join our voices and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us when he prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, amen. Let us again worship through song.
Friends, as we go from this time of worship, let the peace of Christ rule in all of our hearts, because we have indeed been called to live in one body. We need to be thankful and to let the word of Christ dwell in each of us richly. Go from this time of worship and be filled with the love of God, our Heavenly Father and Creator, the peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the assurance and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.